that um, Jesus was implying that if in fact the house is just swept and it is not washed, then it is being prepared for seven more devils. And when you look at that, those seven more devils are strategic. And when it is uh, notified, when the enemy is notified that there um, is a washing or a, a sweeping going on, it is a clear indication that there is somebody that's trying to get it right. And when he knows that there is somebody out there that's trying to get it right, then his job is to interfere and send the antonyms to what it is that God is trying to do. And so the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, and we were talking about the seven spirits of God in the book of Isaiah for the sake of time, I won't read it, but I will give you the scripture that we've been moving from in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the first through the third verse. And the seven spirits of God, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of strength, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of reverential and obedient fear. And so where I want to park today, and I have such a personal reason for this, um, We've come to the place of strength, divine strength, and understanding why the Lord is making it a requirement. The Lord uh, released the word of prophecy to me on Sunday, and um, I released it on my partnership call on yesterday. And um, it was the first time that I felt um, that there was a just a real move of God on the phone with my partners yesterday and um, to hear them express themselves a few of them and to hear uh, how encouraged they were to keep moving on it just blessed me to no end and some of you have even asked how to become a partner you can call the ministry or you can go to www com, but I would prefer that you call the ministry because I would want you to talk personally somebody to someone if you're going to become a partner or you want to become a partner with Juanita Bynum Ministries. I welcome that. Um, the Lord gave a word, and the word is the word that I'm releasing on this page, and it's ironic that the word that we have landed on in this subject is directly connected to that prophecy. And God just does all things well. He just, oof, he never ceases to amaze me. He said um, on Sunday that the word of the Lord was, it is time to manage the miracle. It is time to manage the miracle. And that the miracle is about to come so fast and so quick that if you're not ready to manage the miracle, you're going to miss the window that God has for you. I don't know about anybody else, but I felt an urgency as if the Lord was saying, that if we miss this window, we won't get another one like it. Because this one is the window of divine promise. This is the one that the believers have been waiting on. This is that, that open door. That open door that the believers have been waiting on. And he said, it's time to manage the miracle. And I'm not just moving my hair up my face because I'm cute. That The fan is blowing on me and they keep blowing it up in my face and making me feel weird. But I don't want to turn the fan off so I don't want anybody to think I'm sitting on Facebook fixing my hair and trying to be all that because I'm not. Um, he said it's time to manage the miracle. And so the scripture he gave me was in the book of Genesis. And if we would go there, Genesis 1, the first chapter of the book of Genesis. 
And it said here that, and God said, let the earth put forth tender vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees yielding fruit, whose seed is in itself, each according to its kind upon the earth, and it was so. So the first thing that I want you to notice is that the Lord has commanded that the vegetation and the fruit be put up on the land. Now watch this. That the fruit be put up on the land and that in the fruit, and if you don't mind me directing this to you and paraphrasing this because it's a word from the Lord, in the fruit that the Lord is about to bring forth because of the time and the effort that you have sown into these projects, the time and the effort that you have sown into your business, that you have labored in your family, that you have labored in, in doing things when you never got credit for it. In that fruit, it's coming with seed in it, which means it's about to become a perpetual blessing. It's about to become I said this many years ago, but the Lord just brought it back to my spirit. It's about to become um, a macadamia nut type of blessing. And what is a macadamia nut blessing? I have to reach open and fix this. What is, what is a macadamia type of blessing? A macadamia type of blessing is that in the macadamia seed, it takes it over 100 years before it yields any fruit. But once it does, it never stops. It is one of the few trees that without maintenance, without care, it is designed to weather the storm. And once it starts yielding nuts, it will never stop. And I don't know about you, but I believe that. I don't know about you, but I receive that in every fiber of my spirit. That what God is about to release, it's time to manage the miracle. And if we're going to manage the miracle, we've got to have a different mindset. You've got to have a different mindset. So now he's talking about the vegetation that's going to be here. Then he sent me to the 24th verse. It said, and God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kinds. Livestock, creeping things, and wild beasts of the earth according to their kind, and it was so. So now the livestock is here, and now the creeping things are here. Then he said, God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image after our likeness, in our image, after our likeness. And what is, watch this now, watch this now. Here comes the swing. What is in the likeness of our image? In the likeness of our image goes back to the scripture that I read in Luke 4 and 18, when it talks about that Jesus, he has the spirit of the Lord um, up on him. And that spirit, as the commentary states, is without measure. So when the Lord creates us in his image, we are created spirit without measure. But when we choose to live in the flesh, when we choose to live in the realm of carnality, and what is carnality? I want to give it a different definition today. Carnality is not just foolishness. Carnality is not just people clowning around. Carnality is the realm of limitation. Carnality is the realm of calculation. Carnality is the realm of measurement because everything that is measured has a time and it has a season. It has a cutoff point. But when I begin to live in this world, in the spirit realm, then I'm not cut off and I'm not limited. And I can do anything that the spirit puts my mind to do. Who am I ministering to today? Who am I ministering to today? So he says, and then he says, now move to uh, the 28th verse. And God blessed them. 
and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it using all its vast resources in the services of God and man. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. And so when God got finished with creation, even the Lord desired to have management. Are you seeing that? When he got through creating everything, he could have left it the way that it was. He could have allowed the animals and the birds and everybody to just run free and flowers to just grow wild. But he said, if this is going to multiply, thank you, Jesus. If this is going to multiply, I need somebody to manage this miracle. This is not natural what I'm doing. I'm doing something from the supernatural. And if this is going to grow, I need a manager. If this is going to mature, I need a manager. If anything that has anything to do with expansion is going to take place, God needs you. And this is why the enemy has come against your strength. Good Lord have mercy. This is why he has come against your strength. But what does the book of Revelation say? Go with me to the book of Revelation 1. I want you to see something. Go with me to the book of Revelation 1. I want you to hear something that God is saying to us today in that scripture. Revelation 1. Revelation 1, 10. And I'm going to read the first part because this is the part that I want you to grab. I want you to grab this part. He said, I was in the spirit in special communication with the Holy Spirit and empowered to receive and record the revelation from Jesus Christ on the Lord's day. Get that first part. Get that first part. I want you to get that first part. I was in the spirit. I was not in the flesh. I was not in carnality. I was not in the realm of limitation. I was in the spirit with the Holy Spirit and empowered to receive and record the revelation from Jesus Christ. In other words, if I'm going to fully understand what God is saying, I'm going to have to get in the spirit. And then I'm going to have to wait there until the Lord empower me to be able to receive it. That's why I keep saying to us every time I come on this page that the scripture said hearing and they still can't hear, see, and they still can't see. Why? Because we have not recognized yet that hearing is a miracle. That being able to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us is a miracle. And so in order for him to speak that revelation, I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine God taking John up in the Spirit. And the spirit of the Lord is trying to talk to him and people trying to talk to him too. The spirit of the Lord is saying, come up here. I got something I got to show you because what I'm going to speak to you, I need you to write this down. And while you're trying to write down what the Lord is saying, somebody else is saying something. Somebody else has a has an opposing opinion about what they think God is going to do for you, how they think it's going to turn out. And so now you're wondering why, why have, why do I feel like I'm on the verge of a breakthrough, but the breakthrough hasn't come because you're halted between two opinions. You're halted between trusting God and trusting people. Who am I preaching to today? I'm ministering to somebody because I feel the anointing early. Because you're teeter-tottering back and forth. You're vacillating in the spirit and out of the spirit. Because once God gives you something in the spirit, you have to remain in the spirit. You have to live in that spirit in order for what the spirit says is going to come to pass. Because the spirit is who is what's going to bring it to pass. So how does God look like he bringing something to pass in the spirit and you over here in the flesh? Oh God, somebody need to say something right there. Somebody need to say something right there. 
And so he said, I had to go with the spirit into the realm. I couldn't stay down here. God wouldn't permit it for this particular thing that God wants to do, this particular thing that God is speaking, and I hear you, Lord, prophetically today, this particular thing that God is about to do for you that is on this page today, I cannot do it. You cannot hear me from the realm that you are in. I need you to come up here because you won't get it. You will never understand it. It won't make any sense to you. If I tell you to do something, it won't make any sense to you. I remember I said this to my partners on yesterday. Um, one of the young ladies that um, is a spiritual daughter of mine. I remember when she was going through and, and going through a divorce and, 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 and had three little kids and living in an apartment and, and, and just barely making it. And struggling. And one day in prayer, in 5 a.m. prayer, the Lord spoke out prophetically and said, I want you to run because the Lord said, go look for a house because the Lord has just found you a house. So at first she looked like, you talking to me? It's like, okay, you're my spiritual mother. And I just told you last Sunday that there's times that I can barely keep the lights on. And you telling me to go look for a house and I can't even afford this apartment that we're in? I said, God said, go do it. About a month passed by and apparently she hadn't obeyed God. And I was in the middle of preaching. And I whirled around in the middle of preaching and said, do what the Holy Ghost said do. Stop trying to figure out God in your mind. Because see, you in the realm of calculation, there you go measuring. And that's why many of us can't step into the realm of the supernatural because God will speak something to you in the spirit and then you go right back to measuring. You go back to counting. You go back to telling God how much you got and, and, and what you got coming in. That ain't how he said he was going to do it. Good Lord have mercy, Jesus. Lord, how am I going to fix this? That's not your problem. When God speaks a word to you, and he tells you to do something. You're to get it ready. It's his problem to find the door. It's his responsibility to find who's going to finance it. Your job is to get it ready. Your job is to be ready. Your job is to be ready. Your job is not to figure out. Where is going to be? Who is going to help me? Which direction it's coming from? Your job is to prepare what the spirit told you to prepare. And be ready. Because the miracle is here. I need a manager, said the Lord. Well, wait a minute. He says, manage the miracle. Manage the miracle. Well, why do people handle, why do people hire managers? Think about that. Targets, Walmart, whoever, Nordstrom's, Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus. Why do they hire managers? They don't hire managers just to manage what's already in the store. They hire managers to foresee what this store needs to do to increase its value. So if you don't have a mind where you can already see what's coming up the road, then you're not the manager that God needs. And you need to ask God, get me ready to manage this miracle. Get my mind ready to manage this miracle. My God, who is he talking to? Who is he talking to? So then he says here, oh God, I said this the other day. I said, you know, when we say, oh God, don't give me a car. Everybody go boogity, 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 that's what he said. The Lord gonna give you a house. Boogity, 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 but, but you're not ready to manage it. You're not ready for it. I said to her, go look for it. Do you not know she went to look for the house, came back and said to me how much she needed as a down payment? And I said to her, that ain't no money for God. She said, mother, that's a lot of money. I said, that ain't no money for God. I said, if God told you to go get it, and he did, he done already got the money somewhere. It's already there. It's already there. A couple of weeks later, she came and said, 
My old job found a 401k that I didn't even know I had, and it was over $40,000 sitting in it. God need a manager. He needs a manager. But we can't, we can't become the fullness of what the Spirit is speaking because we're too weak-minded. Can I just, can I just help you to get this today? Can you just let God use me to help all of us today? This is what he's talking about, the spirit of strength. The spirit of strength. The spirit of strength is, watch this, it's sturdiness. It's vigor, yes. It's toughness. It's, because some of y'all is tough being nothing. You be, you be, you being tough doing nothing. He's like, I'm, 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 I'm strong. I ain't, ain't going to let nobody run over me. But you ain't doing nothing. You're not doing nothing with all that strength. you managing nothing. You just got a few people scared of you, but you're not, you're not tough in production. <laughs> Stamina, fitness, and health. We got that part. We got that part. We got that part. So then if the enemy is coming in with seven more devils, what spirit is he going to bring to attack this? If God is saying, you are to have my strength, then what spirit is he sending? He's sending the spirit of frailty. He's coming to attack the body. He's coming to attack the physical body. He's coming to attack the physical body. He's coming to wear your body down. He's, you know, God, he's coming to give you a lot of psychological sicknesses. Things that will start showing up in your body just so you can grab a hold to a thought and hold it there. But it's not yours. And I rebuke it today in the name of Jesus. It's not your sickness. It is not your sickness. It's the psychological demonic force that have come. Because if I can make you think something is really wrong with you, then I got you where I want you. And I got your strength. Lord Jesus, he's talking to somebody today. Strength, he comes to bring vulnerability. He comes to put you in a place where your guards are down. Where he knocked you to your knees. Oh God, I wish I had somebody out there that wanted to hear this. What is the other spirit that he brings? What is the other demon that he comes to counteract this, this seven spirits of God? When it gets to the place of strength. Half-heartedness is the, is the antidote to, to antonym to this spirit of strength. The antonym is half-heartedness. And what is half-heartedness? I want you to hear this. What is half-heartedness? Half-heartedness is to be able to be unaffected, unable to take effective action because I'm not all the way in it. I don't all the way believe it. I haven't all the way sold out to it. Who am I talking to? One day I believe it and one day I don't. That's a spirit that's after your strength. And when you feel that thing coming, you got to rebuke it and you got to shut it down. Lord have mercy. He comes to interrupt your prayer. I'm going to show you something that God showed me the other day. He comes to interrupt your prayer. This is getting ready to bless you, what I'm getting ready to say. He comes to make you impotent. You can't take action. You can hear this thing, but you got me paralyzed and I can't move in it. It's deeper than this, people. It's deeper than this, people. And I'm going to show you why. Because I remember reading a book that I had. And this book was on uh, talking about spending time with God. And it was written by a rabbi. And the rabbi said that he was asked to march in the civil rights movement in Selma with Martin Luther King. And he said, 
when he was asked to do it, it was on a Sabbath. And Martin Luther King was African-American. So he said he battled with that. He battled with that. And he said, I don't know if I could do this. Because it's a Sabbath, and usually on the Sabbath, I just pray. And I labor before God. And I give God prayer. He said, but I felt led of the Spirit to go. And he said, I went. He said, and when I started marching, I felt the spirit of the cause come upon me. He said, and the Lord revealed to me in that moment that my legs just became prayer. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I just want to know that anybody hear that. So the enemy comes to attack your strength because he comes to attack your prayer. And what is the prayer to a person that has been called to manage a miracle? It's your ability to let your arms be prayer and let your legs be prayer. Let everything that you're putting together that God told you to do to become the answer to that prayer. And so he comes to stop that. Because he don't want you to pray. We think pray is just getting on my face before God. But the Bible said that when, when, when Israel got ready to go to battle and they were being attacked, that Joshua got on his face and he began to pray. And the Lord said to him, get up off of your face from praying and go and confront the issue. And the Lord went with him. Is anybody listening to this? You're moving forward in what God has given you is your intercession. And the enemy wants to take your strength. He wants, to, he wants to bind you up so that you can't move. He wants to keep you to a place where you are vulnerable and dependable on other people and other means. When the miracle is here, it's already here. Lord Jesus impotent the antonym of strength is impotent unable to take effective action helpless and powerless but watch this but the root word of impotent is potent and that means having great power influence or effect and what does revelations 1 say he empowered me to hear this He's empowering you to do this. And you won't fail this time. You won't fail this time. I don't care how many times you've tried it and you fail. You will not fail this time. You won't fail. You won't fail. You will not fail. Because a lot of times we go into things and we don't know the enemy. We don't know the enemy that is assigned to come against it. You won't fail this time. You will not fail this time. Why do I say that? Why is God calling you to attention today? Why is he saying, come on. Come on up here. Go to Acts 10. Go to Acts 10. I'm going to show you why. Acts the 10th chapter. Lord Jesus, have mercy. Oh, God, I'm going to come back to that. I just saw something that I, that I just needed to. Here he says, here he says right here. Here he says right here. The Acts of 10 chapter. The storyboard here is directly related to the spirit of strength. The empowering of movement. Because here you have a man who is a Jew who went up on the rooftop to pray. And then you have another man, look at this now, who sold into the Jews and was a devout man and loved God. Watch this, people. Watch this, people. About the ninth hour, which is the 3 p.m. hour. Do you think this is coincidence? I don't. 
Do you think it's coincidental that God would give me this today? I don't. About the ninth hour, which is the 3 p.m. hour, there is a man that is a disciple that is praying on the rooftop. And then there is a person around about the same time is in another place and he gets a visitation by an angel. Who am I talking to today? Because you got, you got to know which side you're on and that's you. You're on this page. You're the Cornelius. You're on this page today. You're being visited by the Lord. You're on this page today. The Lord has spoken something to you. That the devil wants you to deny that it was God because of the way that you see it going. But we will not back up. The Bible said, if you back up, if you turn back, I have no pleasure in you. Mm -mm, we won't back up. You can't back up. You can't afford to back up. You got to stay right there with what he said and leave the results up to him. Your job is to be consistent. And knowing that he said it, Cornelius was visited by the Lord. And when that word was spoken to him, and I want you to hear this, and this is what, this is what some of our problems are right now, right now. See, I know, I know the enemy don't like this because he keep on messing with this camera. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. One of the things that God is trying to bring to our attention is this is this and that is here Cornelius is asking is being asked to send for a man and he don't know why and he don't know for what but all he know is that it's a prophetic word and he could have missed his window he could have missed his timing by standing there talking about well what I'm supposed to ask him well what is he going to do for me well, what does he have for me? Well, why do I have to go all the way over there? Well, why do I have to send for him? We ask too many questions. Sometimes he's looking for, going down, number seven, that reverential fear and obedience. That's all he wants. We ask too many questions. Well, what, what's going to come out next? Well, what is God going to do next? How are we asking what is God going to do next when we're not doing what God is doing now? Did you hear that? He became obedient and he moved into action. And he sent his people and said, go find this man. Because I've been visited by the Lord. An angel came to me and he spoke to me and told me I have need to go find him. Go find him. And while they were on their way, I want you to see this. Ah, oh, thank you, Jesus. While they were on their way. They hadn't got there yet. They hadn't got there yet. Y'all going to make me shout. They hadn't got there yet. They hadn't got there yet. It ain't got you yet. But while they were on their way, the Lord whoop, took Peter up in the spirit. Because there was movement on Cornelius' side. You're sitting there, but God is saying, I need movement on your side before I can take up in the spirit who I already have ordained to be your help. I need movement on your side before I can take up and arrest in the spirit somebody that's going to write you the check, somebody that's going to open the door for you. But you want me to move, but I don't see movement because when I see movement in you and you don't know where you're going, you don't know who it is that you're going to meet, then I know that you're simply trusting my word. And now I got to do what I said I was going to do. Is anybody listening? Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Movement. You want God to move. Movement. The manager. Oh, God. The manager don't wait till all the shirts is out. The manager have to anticipate that something else is coming. Some, some more people are going to like this. The manager has to order with an anticipation. The manager has to move into things with anticipation that there is somebody out there that wants what I have to offer. 
And if you don't move in faith, and if you don't move by way of the spirit, like this man, the divine connection is already there. But God has no need to wake up the connection. He has no need to take the connection up in the spirit realm and use that person to do something that they have never done before. If God is giving you something that is extraordinary and something that is extra powerful and something that you know that is peculiar and unusual, but you know that there is something burning in me and I know that God has called me to do something great. If you know that, then you have to understand that the person that God has to wake up is a divine connection. Because guess what? The Jews had no dealings with the Gentiles. When Peter got to that man's house, he said, you do know that a Jew ain't got no business fellowshipping with you. I don't have no business being in your house, but the Spirit of the Lord took me up. My God from Zion, I just need somebody to just give God worship. The Spirit of the Lord took me up. And the Lord gave me your name. God said that there was somebody coming to search me out. And when they get there, I'm to go with them. You talking about Peter. You talking about a disciple of God. He could have said, whoever you talking about God, you let them come to me. But instead, he said, but the Lord sent me to you. He brought me to where you were. God have mercy. I hope you're listening to this today. I hope you're listening to this today. You tell me, well, what am I going to do? Move. What am I going to do? Put movement in there. Which way am I going to go? Just start walking. What am I going to do? Just start writing. What am I going to do? Just start planning. Just start building. Why? Because you are a manager of the miracle. You're not an employee. You're not enamored by what you can touch and see. You're not the person that stands behind the counter and ooh and ah over the product. You're the person that sees in the future what's coming. He called John up in the spirit because he said, you have the ability to come up here so I can show you what's to come. Oh, God, have mercy, Jesus. Woo. What you need to understand is that when the Lord calls you to move, when the Lord causes you to move, this is not a normal movement. This is not, this is just not, oh, I think I'm a doodle or something. No, what you need to understand is that when God gives you when the Lord gives you a vision and God calls you to do something and he calls you to be a manager, he empowers you. And what does strength mean? Strength also means power. And what does power and strength mean? It means force. Which means the enemy wants to paralyze you. And the reason why he wants to par paralyze you is because every movement that you make is a force. Are you hearing that? You may think it's just a little something, but it's not. It's a force. And you are a force to be reckoned with. Oh, anybody believe that? I just, I just want to know who believed that today. And you need to type that and say, I am a force to be reckoned with. Because you didn't call yourself, God called you. You didn't give yourself that vision. That's not a, 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 some kind of figment of your imagination. That's a word from God. That's a word from God. And he wants to stop your real prayer life. After you have prayed, then pray. After you have prayed with your mouth, pray with your actions. Good Lord have mercy. After Peter prayed and got the word from the Lord, 
He then had to move in that with his actions. And the scripture said, God is not a respecter of person. He is not a man of partiality. What he's speaking to one, he's speaking to all of you. My God, I wish you would get this. You got to do something. And you got to do something in a hurry. Because the miracle is upon you. While they were on their way, activation began. While you on, that's why I can't. I can't in this hour. I can't. I can't be around nothing that's dead. I can't hang around nothing that ain't doing nothing. I don't want no friends that ain't doing nothing. I don't want no associates that ain't doing nothing. There's a certain, there's a certain speed that God puts you in when you get your strength. Huh? There's a certain speed that God drops on you when you get your strength. And when you start moving in that speed, it has a way of desensitizing you. To the point that you don't care no more what people think. You don't care no more what they got to say. Because as a matter of fact, I can't hear it. You're not afraid to walk away. You're not afraid to lose. You're not afraid to disconnect. Because this is a window for somebody and I'm talking to you. This is a window that God has opened for you. The strength of the Lord that is even coming upon you while you're listening to me minister. This is a window. And the Lord is saying, I'm not going to keep opening up the window. And you keep shutting it down for false relationships. For people that cannot get you anywhere. Is anybody listening to what he's saying today? You've been an employee in the kingdom long enough. Now he said it's time for you to become a manager of the miracle. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? Sometimes you got to make some hard decisions. But destiny is calling. Destiny is calling. And for some of us, it's screaming at us. For some of us, we are the recipients of Revelation 4. We are recipients of what he said. And I heard the Lord. And his voice sounded like a warring trumpet. He's screaming at some of us. Because the time is running out. The window opportunity is closing. Hop through it. Before you miss your window. God today is calling you to manage the miracle. My God. One of the definitions says when you have strength, you have courage, you have bravery. You have strength of mind. You have strength of character. You have backbone. You have grit. And you have spirit. You better post today and say, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. You have strength. Strength that you know about of. When you start moving, you're going to see it come through. And you're going to look around and wonder, where did I get this strength from? You got strength because you moved. Because you exercised the word. And the Bible said, blessed is the man who executes the word of God. Not just hear it but execute it. Today you've been called to manage the mission.